Hi all, uh, welcome to new episode of Sports C. Let's talk sports. Today we have uh, a special guest with us. He is a ultra endurance cyclist, where the distance is more than 600 kilometers. A, tri- a triathlete, a certified Ironman coach, a three-time Ironman finisher. He is also uh, uh, holds a record for being the fastest Indian ultra cyclist and the fastest Indian to qualify for the race across America, which is called RAM. And one of the top three Ironman tri- uh, triathletes in India. Uh, he has won several prestigious of race titles, such as Deccan Klim Panger, Desert 500, uh, Enduro, etc. Other than being an athlete himself and uh, being a coach, he also has his own academy called Endurance Sports. Please welcome Chaitanya, uh, Chaitanya Vilhal. And uh, with him, we have Nikhil Punde, he, who is his student. And also got into this sport uh, recently and completed his uh, first uh, half Ironman. Welcome Chaitanya and welcome Nikhil. Thank you for liking and sharing a lot of the content that we've been sharing on Sports C. Let's talk sports. But for that, please subscribe on this channel now. Hey, hi guys. Uh, hi Chaitanya. Hi Nikhil. Uh, good to see you on Sports C. Let's talk sports. Hi Sid. Uh, thanks for thanks for having us. I said it's great. Again, I th- uh, guys, we've been talking on uh, multiple topics like uh, uh, regular sports or, or, or different kind of competitive team sports like badminton, uh, cricket, football, kabaddi and all sports. Today, we'll be talking about something different which is participative sport. And it is completely towards the the endurance. It's completely towards the fitness. I think uh, just to give a quick background, we have Chaitanya with us who is a Ultra endurance cyclist, uh, where the distance is over 600 kilometers. A triathlete, a certified Ironman coach, a three-time Ironman. Uh, when you say Ironman, it is 3.86 kilometers swimming, 180 kilometers cycling, 42 kilometer running. Oof, I'm tired with uh, saying all these things. Uh, beyond that, he also holds the record for being the fastest Indian ultra cyclist and the fastest Indian to qualify for the race across America, Ram, which is pretty exciting. And also one of the top three triathletes in India. Uh, he has won several pres- prestigious races such as Deccan Cliffhanger, Desert 500, uh, Enduro, and so on and so forth. So instead of uh, me taking a lot of time with this and uh, the whole bio of Chaitanya, I want to ask him one simple thing. Why triathlon? A, a quick question uh, you know, to uh, answer you that is, uh, I used to be one of my first competitive sport was swimming uh, back okay. in the day in my school days uh, when I was in my fifth standard, sixth standard. After that, uh, around in high school, I moved on to football and running, uh, a lot of cross country running. Um, and then when I was in Australia doing my master's uh, in biomechanics, I, uh, you know, the fastest way uh, to go get around and the cheapest way to get around as a student was a, was a cycle. So that's how I got reintroduced to the cycle again. And, you know, I started um, competitive or kind of semi-competitive in Australia. And when I came back, uh, you know, I was really good at all three. So, married all three, trained for it, and became one of the first uh, Ironman of the time. Oh, wow. So, yeah. uh, I be- so back yeah, in the I- day, when, when I did it, there were barely, you know, 10 or 20 Ironman in the country at that time. <laughs> oh, wow. I, yeah, it's like I had just heard about Ironman. Uh, you believe me, I, 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 I could barely finish my first 21 kilometer when I ever did it in US. Uh, it was like, uh, I, I, but uh, yeah, after that, I, I improved myself. Uh, wasn't that bad. Uh, came to my 215 as my uh, best score in the in the 21 kilometer. But yeah, I, I've been a swimmer. Well, not bad. I, huh? Yeah, it, but it, it happened over two, two and a half years. Uh, but uh, anyways, I, I've been a swimmer myself. I have uh, swam for Mumbai uh, during my school days. Uh, so it was, uh, so I can I used to enjoy cycling, so but I never thought of marrying all this thing together. Probably I was less, uh, I was very lazy to marry all this together. I do one thing at a time. So, but uh, the way you spoke about marrying it all together, uh, we have another friend here, uh, Nikhil, who few days, uh, some time back, was uh, with me on this on this uh, sportsy platform talking about another participatory sport, touch tennis, which is new coming new to India. So I know Nikhil for some time from a national level badminton player to a avid boxer to introducing touch tennis and now <laughs> run, running across uh, everywhere and uh, marrying all the three things together. So Nikhil, what got you into a triathlon after doing all this thing? 
Yeah, so I think uh, uh, that that's true. That as in, I've always enjoyed multiple sports. But as even as Chai said, right? Even similar similar for me, I've always like I, I grew up playing sports. Uh, as in, uh, obviously, being from India, cricket is the first sport we are exposed to. But I, I played badminton uh, for some time. I played at the national level. That was really got, what really got me started into the whole uh, sports and the fitness side of things. Um, when I went to US, that's when uh, I, I sort of uh, badminton was not that popular. That's where uh, boxing as fitness is something uh, I got exposed to. When again working in the whole uh, management consulting, 14, 15 hours a day, I, I, I put on a lot of weight, not eating the right stuff, crazy hours, not getting the right sleep, hydration, and everything was like uh, like completely not possible to maintain all that so that's when uh, boxing was a way for me to get back into uh, fitness it, it was a good combination of sports and fitness coming together so that's how i started that i i got exposed to triathlon actually when i was there so I, a couple of my colleagues at at kpmg my previous employer uh, they they were avid triathletes so that's where i was like at some point i do want to do it and then finally when i moved back to india i met jai and, and sort of uh, we, we started the triathlon journey, at least from, from my end. So uh, it's, it's, I think sports has always been something that has run parallel in my life. Whatever I do, as long as sports is there, I feel more present and more anchored. And, and oh. that's how it's been. So that's the only I think that, that's Exactly, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. So, uh, so Chaitanya, uh, yeah. as you said, there, there are hardly any uh, athletes uh, in India. Uh, again, frankly speaking, Couple of years back, Milin Soman doing it at the age of 50 got a lot of uh, eyeballs to Iron Man and triathletes in India. And I'm sure the people are doing it. So I was five years back, 2015. Yeah, yeah, five years back. And he was 50 there, then, at the age of 50, he did it. And um, yeah. so I know Kaustub the, the doing it for some time, uh, then Hardik Patil doing it for some time. Uh, but uh, uh, Kausu also has his own Correct. coaching and academy. Hardik is doing it for himself uh, mainly and supporting different causes. So specifically coming to you, uh, when you started as an athlete, forget uh, before going to the coach, as an athlete, uh, what was the toughest thing? Was it mental or the physical? I would say mental. I mean, when I, you know, ask me now, I would always say mental because the thing that I went through to get this at that time, the sport was not in its mainstream. We had a lot of challenges. Uh, nobody knew about it. So, you know, finding the right infrastructure, getting the right equipment uh, at the right cost because they were not so massively available. So, we had to uh, source a lot of it from outside. And then, uh, you know, justifying. Uh, so, at that time, I had even quit my uh, mainstream job that I had uh, as a as a lecturer, um, I quit that and then to pursue sports and pursue as a professional athlete. Mm -hmm. I started out as a long distance cyclist, then moved on to uh, triathlons. Um, and then I, I made a national record at that time. And then um, again, one of my Ironman timings at that time was one of the fastest again. In that time, I'm telling you right now, right. Uh, it's been broken over. Uh, it um, doesn't matter. Sachin scored 100 centuries, wherever it was. It, was, it, yeah. it will always be 100 centuries. So, um, yeah. So, uh, the whole uh, aspect, like, you know, the whole supportive aspect of it was challenging. Um, mm -hmm. But physical, I mean, uh, you know, I, I kind of found with, with a lot of struggle, about six, seven months of going through the whole thing, managed to found, uh, find some sponsors who would, you know, help me, you uh, do this Iron Man because at that time uh, uh, it it was for me it was going to be a very economically uh, challenging uh, sport to travel across halfway across the world. I did my first Iron Man in Switzerland. The Switzerland, as we all know, is very expensive. So the whole thing was uh, right now. If you ask me, that was uh, you know it it really helped me go to a next level mentally. Uh, mm -hmm. Physically, I was already there because I was already doing right. a lot of cycling and running. Uh, so it was just about structuring it properly. Okay. So uh, okay, I, I learned a lot out of myself. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I'm sure the kind of effort that you're putting yeah. in. Uh, I have seen difference in Nikhil as well, <laughs> so, and uh, I know him for the last few years now, and I have seen a difference with uh, what he's been doing and how he is pursuing. Also, I think that this one of the challenges in India is probably the open water availability as well. Uh, so you're in the swimming pool yes, and. Yes, uh, yes. 
is is a big challenge in india so when you got passionate about this particular sport uh, and uh, you knew there were challenges ahead of you because there was no uh, a limelight to this people didn't know about it then you found couple of sponsors uh, so and i'm sure you are very thankful to them because that is that that they they made your journey right. happen yeah. did you ever feel like uh, giving up sometime uh, because uh, what am i doing uh, i want to do it but there is no support i can't make it happen there is no infrastructure this that i have to travel outside the country all the time to make compete somewhere so did you ever feel like giving up somewhere not really like i mean i definitely physically you come very close to giving up almost all the time in training um, in a very hard race sometimes uh, after say uh, i've done a lot of those uh, pune to goa ultra cycling races uh, one of my toughest races i've done is the uh, the rajasthan uh, 700 km desert 500 race that was a po- almost a point break for me that you know it was so tough uh, riding at 48 degrees in the day 3 degrees in the night and after that i was like yeah, i'm done with the shit man you know i'm not going to do this again. um but then uh, that was the whole physical aspect but mentally i i got you know every day i get stronger even today i don't think i i would ever you know i've come to a point where i say ki forget it i'm not i don't want to do any sports or uh, i don't want to cycle or i don't want to do an iron man because uh, no no uh, that has point break has not come mentally uh physically a lot of times yeah. um the challenges are there uh, definitely infrastructure wise financial wise but i think we can overcome all of that excellent i i remember uh, i was i was enjoying the scenic drive and uh, enjoying the death valley in in us from the nevada to california i was in a nice car comfortable car and there were cyclists going past me i said ki what are you doing is 100 yeah. plus degrees outside and i can't even step out to click a photo and you're very cycling inside this yeah. so i i okay so i understand where it, uh, when this thing happened uh, and what happened so uh, nikhil question to you at uh, chaitanya uh, from athlete yeah. yes he is still competing but from athlete he moved on to become a coach he's a certified ironman coach yeah. and you are an athlete so did you come to a point where okay I, i'm good at badminton i'm good at uh, uh, i'm good at boxing i'm doing all these activities and uh, why the heck am i doing all this thing together did you feel like giving up somewhere or it was just a kick that you had to finish, to do it yeah I, i think i think the 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 reward the kick as you said right that was that was really what kept me going i think when i started off this whole uh, as as chai talked about it right like marrying the three sports together for me like that was the biggest pull of a triathlon that i have the variety uh, of of three different sports packed into one so it never got very monotonous at any point combo meal <laughs> so i liked it right like like you you swim you just immediately get on a cycle you start running you're using different parts of your muscles of your body and uh, different surfaces right so i think uh, to the start off with that really sort of was the thing that uh, pulled me again another aspect that kept me going was i think the the improvements and the 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 ability to sort of push myself right it, it i think typically you tend to uh, either if it's too easy or if it's way beyond your capability these are the two scenarios when you tend to move away from something but in right. this case it had the light, right level of toughness uh, and challenge associated with it so i think in in all three disciplines and again i i, I none of the three disciplines i had a prior background in so i had to like start from scratch up like which i would remember like we did a proper gate analysis uh, i i got my first road bike like it was after like almost 15 years that i started cycling again i was doing breast stroke i didn't even know how to do a, a freestyle and forget about doing an open water one But incident small small one yeah. incident was when uh, nikhil just started cycling after a long time he could not even you know every time he wanted to have a drink he had to stop the yeah, cycle to stop. you know then drink and yeah. then start again and for Correct. us as competitive cyclists i was like what are you doing you know you can't <laughs> yeah. stop yeah so you didn't use that camel right, bag like, with the with the with the thing in your mouth no. that's for me <laughs> yeah yeah but even like whole eating and drinking on the cycle so i think these small small challenges mm-hmm. that kept me going and then improvement that i saw whether timing wise whether training wise whether physically and i think we will come to it also but even mentally i feel mm-hmm. uh, the those sort of improvements really got 
kept that momentum and and still like even i am equally excited every day to sort of uh, not just for the event part but for the training part uh so which which i think is, is yeah, pretty cool I, I, about the sport yeah and i I'll, yeah. i'll come to you because you uh, you work in the sports industry as well so i'll come to you about how the yeah. whole nature of participative sports is but i want to come to sure. focus on chaitanya uh, come to chaitanya about uh, what made you become a coach and what is your coaching philosophy because i'm sure the philosophy is what you are and what yeah. you believed in and it is yeah. taken yeah. forward and that is how usually the coach philosophy is but what is that you do and how you do it see i was i was always uh, you know kind of into teaching uh, uh, even when i was uh, in my undergrads i was instrumental in uh, you know making the first female football team in my college garwari college um, mm-hmm. i built that team uh, coached them and we went to the finals in the first year that is when you know i i discovered that i have a knack for teaching then obviously as a academy you know in academia teaching goes hand in hand right i i was teaching in australia also i was tutoring to earn some money on the side then yeah, i came back uh, one of the easiest and the first job i got offered was to be a assistant professor to teach Mm-hmm. another you know that was all the all the time you know the teaching was right up there uh, for me you know i found that i have a knack for socializing to uh, communication or even getting uh, through getting my point through and understanding what my students need from me right. uh, exactly what they need so that's how uh, i you know uh, i was building myself and okay when i when i wanted to do my first uh, iron man i i did not have a lot of people to go to at the you know i i didn't have anyone to coach me also you know it was in a very very nascent stage then i was like i decided keep i will you know uh, after teaching myself all of this uh, as a, a biomechanics masters uh, you know i have the knowledge of everything that i need uh, right. the sports exercise part of it then i did some nutrition um, uh, certifications then i have worked Uh, in a gym so after quitting my job as a scientist i i went and worked in a gym uh, as a trainer as a personal trainer mm-hmm. where i must have coached about 500 one on one personal training sessions or probably more so again more developing myself understanding the needs of the people and that's when you know once i knew the whole anatomy and the movement patterns and exercises physiology kinesiology mm-hmm. i then said okay okay now's the time that people want to do an iron man okay i'm going to help you out i know i've you know i've done this i have done something way harder like being an ultra athlete being out there for 30 hours 24 hours we are used to it mm-hmm. so iron man which lasts about typically about 15 hours uh, was able to apply all my mental training onto the iron man and one of my first athletes that i'm still coaching from 6 7 years back he is currently one of the fastest indian triathletes uh in his age group definitely uh mehir uh we have a cyclist yeah. also who's uh, one of the again uh, one of the top 10 in the nationals uh, a lot of these young kids i have start i started about 2014 ish so yeah so and you know it's we, i said it started to show results and then yeah. i went about you know really large scale about 2 or 3 years back where i took on a little more people and i even met nikhil about 2 years back was it nikhil uh, he That's was right. a yeah. he was a typically a, a boxer at that time and i was very surprised that he wanted to do an iron man so i ended up telling him like are you sure like you know you have to do <laughs> this 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 you know and then he was like yeah 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 <laughs> I, i had i had one request to for chai that i just wanted i don't i don't want to lose a lot of weight i don't want to become very lean <laughs> really yeah, i don't worry we'll take care of that <laughs> um, okay. so, so that's how i became a coach yeah. right and what's your philosophy what uh, what is that you do because that is what you are driving it into Correct. your uh, teams as well who are training under you so what so is what, that your philosophy so the thing, the the most important thing that was really instrumental in my own athletic career was the whole science behind this the whole uh, you know coming as a scientist applying the scientific uh, principles is what i did when i started uh, you know semi professional racing um, and it started to show results uh, all the nutrition uh, aspects the biomechanical aspects biochemistry and it was just amazing you know uh, mm-hmm. with a uh, not a lot of you know um, background or talent inherent talent i managed to 
come on the podiums. So I started experimenting, uh, came up with uh, very scientific ways to train. I really researched and even went. Um, uh, so for example, I was an assistant uh, uh, at the Race Across America for a professional uh, Canadian cyclist. I mm-hmm. was on that team uh, for the Race Across America, which is a 5,000 kilometer race. That goes right. right across that death valley that you were talking yeah, yeah. about. Right? Correct. So I learned a lot from, from the developed countries and uh, from all these big teams. Uh, I was even an intern with Giant in Australia. Uh, I learned how to do bike fits over there. So married all that, learned from all that and applied it here. And till now, the academy has been responsible to create more than 500 uh, Plus, coached 500 plus athletes, uh, wow. probably more than 100 Ironman um, athletes. Yeah. Wow, excellent. So that's the I... principle, science. Even uh, exactly. Nikhil will tell you, uh, uh, we focus a lot on, uh, you know, we, even at the start, heat analysis, uh, biomechanical uh, angles we measure for proper, pow- uh, full 100% uh, power output on the bike, uh, underwater swim analysis, uh, you know, that, and, and there's proper nutrition. Right. So, uh, yeah. what who what is the age of the youngest and the oldest uh, student that you have? Youngest would be about fourteen ish, fourteen fifteen. Okay. Uh, we start try to start young. The younger they are, the better. Long term okay. athlete development. Um, mm-hmm. And the oldest ones uh, probably around sixty five. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah. For nine months. Hey. Excellent, excellent. Uh, um, and, and even uh, even ultra cycling. For this question is mainly from the parents' perspective or the athlete's perspective. What is the age when you actually can start this? Because it is it's a it's a combination of three, right? You are I'm right. sure you're doing one of the three somewhere. I, I don't think people start uh, doing the long distance at early age. Uh, cycle running, uh, yeah. swimming people usually go for or cycling they do for fun. Uh, that is how the nature of our upbringing is. So, what is the right age when you can actually start thinking of ma- uh, marrying these three things together? Sid, uh, see, I'd like to tell you one thing is, you know, we are, we are such a big nation, but uh, we are so bad at triathlon, we have never had even a guy at the Olympics, nor, mm-hmm. uh, nor we don't even have a professional, a proper professional uh, uh, triathlete out mm-hmm. there. And to make that happen, even the, this new coming generation will not have the ability to do that. Okay. The, the next Olympian will be in a triathlon or, you know, it, it doesn't have to be long distance. For example, uh, at the national or the, uh, at the Olympic level, they do very short distances. Correct. It's only about uh, 1,500 meters swimming, about uh, uh, 40 kilometers of cycling and about 10 kilometers of running. This is an Olympic right. distance. Right. Uh, and it's even lesser at the district level and the national levels. Right. So... I, you know, I really recommend a lot of uh, parents that I meet to start them as young as possible, at least with swimming. It's very Mm -hmm. easy to learn swimming at that age. And uh, running any which way happens through all the other supporting uh, uh, stuff that that kids do. Uh, Cycling is very technical and, you know, it's one of the biggest challenges. Uh, One is the road safety um, and then the cost uh, attached to it because cycles are, competitive cycles are expensive and if they want to do, uh, make sure that these kids are training indoors, then they need to have that set up. Um, mm-hmm. They need to buy a trainer and you know all of that, uh, which we are also taking care of. I have bought about three to four trainers in my center and you know helping uh, people get access to these trainers. For example, right, right now in, in lockdown, people can't cycle outdoors. I've just given it out to my athletes so that you know they can still cycle. How are how are people looking at this sport now? Is it still considered to be more of a recreational uh, fitness? Yeah, so or... it is mostly it is mostly a lot of uh, older uh, people are taking part. Uh, if you look at the participation numbers or the percentages, most of them uh, participants are over the age of twenty five. Mm-hmm. Very 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 few, probably less than five to ten percent, are participating under that age group. Yeah, so these are the people who are, you know, probably done with their, you know, they have started jobs, now they have some money and now they can invest or, or they are, you know, getting uh, fat because of the job. So, yeah. so they are, they want to get back into it with some kind of a fun also. So that's, that's what we are seeing. Unfortunately, mm-hmm. not a lot of kids are taking this up at the moment. And uh, how do you think the popularity can go up? Uh, because yes, uh, Billy Somer added some glamour to it. Yeah. 
it 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 was it it unfortunately was one of a thing and then the okay. media also did not take it up uh, see marathon has as a as a participative sport marathon has picked up phenomenally and and i think uh, the St- stanchard and uh, stanchard mumbai and then now the tata i think has done a phenomenal job in india for that popularity and then the airtel started sponsoring yeah. it and uh, then the tcs and all those things started happening so marathon has reached the level where it's supposed to reach and again i'm not calling it as a as a top or, or still the winners are either from the uh, from the army or they, they are from the kenya yeah. and uh, other countries yeah. so but at least the participation started happening we see people running around in the current lockdown also people are complaining that i'm not able, i can't run most of the people are complaining that i'm not, i don't have a place to run now i can't Correct. go out for running so wh- when do you see uh, this particular sport a triathlon sport will see that kind of uh, participation see triathlon is where somewhere where running was about 12 to 15 years back in india okay okay uh, where people were just discovering it and there were very few elite runners uh, there was you know the shoes were just starting to come that's mm-hmm. where we are right now in terms of triathlon uh, definitely there's a huge huge potential um, uh the curve might just be much more steeper for triathlon just because uh running is acting as a feeder in your for triathlons yeah. yeah running didn't have like a, any other sport as a feeder triathlon has running as a feeder yeah. so we might see a much quicker like as in what took say running 12 to 15 years to be where it mm-hmm. is today uh mm-hmm. it might probably take maybe another 4 or 5 years to see like really huge events happening we even had iron man coming to india for the first time last year Correct. which was pretty big uh, uh, which happened in goa so that that's also did pretty big for the uh, for for the triathlon scene in india um, mm-hmm. i mean the, the number of iron man just jumped up by 1000 like in one <laughs> particular uh, event yeah, yeah. so which is impossible for a lot of athletes uh, to travel outside india because of the money even then you know triathlon is not iron man Yes. right iron man is just a brand right uh, that's a lot of misconception people have that just because you're doing a triathlon doesn't mean you have to do an iron man correct right uh, so that's what it is you know you can triathlon you can do it as a sport there are currently about four or five decent events that happen uh, in india that uh, people can do unfortunately it's not like a marathons where a marathon is happening every other weekend right yeah yeah, um, yeah. Uh, it's not like that so we are still still about 2 3 probably 5 years from that from that right no i think you are very well said about uh, uh, about where we are probably and uh, you having a feeder i think it is very important to accept for a sport that you can uh, live on some uh, other sport which can become a feeder of i course. think that is <laughs> that is that is very important uh, yeah. so nikhil i have a question for you that you are training with chaitanya and uh, be i heard his philosophy and i know you how much science that you love uh, when it comes to sp- uh, sports and performance and all those things but what was the quality that actually got you believing in him beyond uh, the philosophy um so i think one of the things that i really liked about chaitanya the team the power peaks the endurance club that they have is the whole i would say the holistic experience so uh, right from the the scientific aspect whether it's, it's bike fit to gait analysis to the swim biomechanics getting a sense of that to having those uh, group sessions so uh, cycling sessions uh, on sundays uh, running sessions during the week things like that where mm-hmm. all 15 20 30 athletes come together for let's say even open water swim right, right. Uh, and similarly more of a regular monitoring through a uh, uh, way to create a training plan and making sure it's it's very personalized so mm-hmm. it's it's made for me as as nikhil depending on my sort of uh, fitness capabilities my targets right so i think all that together for me worked really well where okay. I, i knew if i had a question i can just uh, go and meet chai we can we can talk through it whether it was a question about nutrition whether it was a question about the mental aspect um mm-hmm. so i think a mixture of the the scientific the the access to events uh, and the personalized training mm-hmm. uh, really helped me because again as i said i did not have a background in the sport so it was very essential that the training is is tailored to what yeah. i am trying to achieve so i remember in fact the first event uh chai would remember that just one and a half months into training i participated in a in a triathlon um uh, 70.3 113 km distance in goa 
uh, mm -hmm. and it, it was <laughs> it was it was it was terrible in the sense that I I, I hardly had trained. Um, I just got into the sport of triathlon uh, and, and sort of I remember my last ten kilometers at, at like one thirty p.m. forty degrees in the Goa humidity, and I was down with cramps, and it took me about eight hours forty minutes to really complete this whole thing. And then fast forward to later that year when I was participating in Sydney, I completed yes. the same distance in six hour forty minutes, so shaving off almost two hours, and I felt amazing. Like after the triathlon, my wife and I actually went to have brunch somewhere. So point being that it, I, the the effect of training was was pretty yeah. uh, clear uh, in in terms of how my body responded and then sort of how I felt after after completing the thing. Mm. my so now uh, uh, uh nikhil uh, how what do you think that can be done for the people uh, to come into this sport more and more as 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 a sports management professional that you are so what is that yeah. you think that can be done to have more and more like chetan i mentioned that there is a feeder and the awareness has to go out and uh, we need to create yeah. those uh, uh, memories for people to understand what exactly it is so what as per you what do you think Yeah, so I think uh, a couple of things that come to my mind, and again, this is based on what I've seen in India and what I've seen uh, in some parts in Australia and in US, where the model is relatively more mature. So I think having definitely more uh, endurance clubs, more dedicated mm -hmm. uh, clubs for triathlon coaching training, I think that's that's very essential. Uh, probably there are just a handful of such. Uh, holistic endurance clubs in india dedicated towards marathon and triathlon specifically training right so having that having more events as in said we have talked about match play having more tournaments across all sports right yeah. and, and same thing applies for uh, triathlon uh, i agree with chaitanya that triathlon is not ironman ironman just a brand around it but it definitely has that pull factor people have yeah. heard more about it but having more and more these local triathlon events so something like we have in in kolhapur in maharashtra that's one of the in fact i think nationally it's one of the most renowned uh, triathlon events that happens in kolhapur so having more such events uh, in in different parts of the country i know it's difficult because of infrastructure access to open water pools yeah. good roads but i think that exposure uh, right from uh, at a kid level to adults level i think will get more people uh, excited about it and i think thirdly definitely Uh, access to uh, uh, i think good bikes good gears and that is mm -hmm. happening i think it's more of a supply demand thing once more people right. enter the sport uh, the bikes will become cheaper things will become cheaper it'll become more accessible right? it's like it's like as entering india after indian <laughs> indians are running so um, so okay. one more thing on that point uh, was the open water aspect a lot of people yeah i uh, wanted to come to that point scared just about hearing the word open water yes um, unfortunately a lot of indians we are bad swimmers on an average yes uh, i don't know why but uh, you know but i would really encourage everyone from now starting and you know making sure that their kids at least know how to swim because yeah. Yeah. trust me as a coach half the battle is won for me there because teaching a 35 or a 40 year old guy to swim it's going to take a long time <laughs> yeah. so uh, uh, chandra uh, i i'm I, i'm a certified deep sea diver Uh, oh, wow. I so I enjoy swimming. I'm a, like I'm as good as a frog uh, who can just be nice. there. Uh, <laughs> but uh, at the same time, I do have that uh, fear in me about the open water as well. Uh, I have saying? no problem. <laughs> I have no problem as long as I go down. I have no problem. It, 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 it's the calmest place on on the, that I can actually see. But your your, I, your Facebook uh, display pic, I think. Is <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, think, it's like coming uh, out of water. Yeah. yeah. So, but so I enjoy underwater is something I can enjoy, but swimming on top of it, uh, when it's I don't know, it's like sometimes uh, again probably that is a, a a thing with the lot of people in India. See, as that well. definitely that, uh, you know yeah. it's more technique driven because uh, um, in diving you know you're going down and just staying there and you know trying to balance yourself and there are a lot of other criteria that you're looking at. Yes. But when you are swimming on the surface, point A to point B, going as fast as possible, it's it's a lot about building that and um, the engine inside the the lungs, the heart, its endurance. Uh, so you could be a great sea diver, yes, but that does not mean you could be the fastest swimmer. Correct. Right. Uh, the technique uh, you'll have to build up, uh, but it does come. You know, I mean, getting over the fear of the depth is what uh, me as a coach uh, we struggle 
to take it out of people a lot of times. Yes. No, um, I agree. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If, if, I remember Chaitanya has, has bought a he has bought a boat. That's when yeah. he's paddling next to you when you're swimming. <laughs> so what we do is, uh, you know, we, we I take my students every single Saturday to the lake. And okay. I make sure that they go out there. They are comfortable. Uh, I have my own kayak where I am around them. So that, you know, keep an eye on them. Uh, so that's how we take that fear out of them. Okay. And what are the places in, in and around Pune that you can do it, do all these things? There are, are for, we are so fortunate to be in Pune. We have yeah. so many lakes. I think we are spoiled for choices. Literally oh, spoiled. Wow. I mean, literally 20 minutes from where I stay, I have got a lake. So not too far. Um, uh, you might know Hinjewadi backside here, Kasar Sai. There's yeah. a dam there. There's Andhra Dam. There's a Pavna, Kamshet, uh, Panshet. Then on the other side, uh, we have so many rivers here. Yeah. I mean, it's countless. So mm-hmm. any of these places yeah. you can go swim. Just make sure you know it's safe or right. you have someone experienced with you. Do not underestimate each other. Right. So. Uh, before I come to my last question to Chaitanya, I have one question for Nikhil. What has been the toughest lesson or the biggest lesson that you have uh, learned from game of uh, triathlon? Game of triathlon. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> yeah. Game of triathlon. Um, <laughs> for me, it is for me. Any sport has, is a game. Uh, it's like it has to have a, a goal, and you do something with a goal. Uh, the like sport is yeah. something that can is different, right? It can be different levels. So that's why that's why I specifically call game of triathlon. Yeah, I think I think the uh, the new thing that I found in, in in this sport is definitely I think the 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 degree of pain your body goes through and your ability to manage it, right? So uh, I think for me the the lesson if you have to ask is has been that uh, a respect your body. I think mm-hmm. uh, your body can do phenomenal things as long as you are putting the right things into it. You're training it. You're taking the right precautions. And it's not just about training, training, training. It's also about like you need to take rest, you need to recover, things like that. And so when you are out there cycling in a triathlon, six hours in, your body wants to give up, uh, how do you keep going, right? So uh, that's, that's for me essentially one of uh, the biggest lessons learned is, is you respect your body, you train your body, and, and you can get the maximum sort of result out of it. Whether and, it's, do, and, do you, nutrition. and do you think do you think that you can say that either of the three things is easy, I can do it and then, okay, then the tougher part is later. Do you think that, because that is also a lesson, right? That underestimating something else and overestimating something else. Uh, that, okay, swimming is something I can manage. Uh, I can do cycling, running may be tough. So, something like that. So, do you plan with those kind of activities? It, it, it gets progressively tougher, I feel. <laughs> because it's, it's, you're putting in more energy every time, right? And, and it sort of keep though it uses slightly different muscles, uh, but uh, cycling and running, especially you end up using the same muscles and and yeah. uh, so it does get progressively tougher. Yes, the finish line is closer relatively. So that's that's the, the good part. Um, but yeah, I think that's that's been the, the biggest lesson because for me, this is the longest duration of an event, like mm-hmm. uh, like six hours, seven hours, eight hours out there in the heat training as in badminton, you name any other sport, right? You don't even boxing, any other sport. Uh, that amount of endurance uh, and, and sort of that, that ability to manage that fatigue for that duration is not there relatively. Right. So that's that's been, and, and I think I feel that is transferable to various things in, in business and life, uh, which, which I really sort of, I, I felt it, where uh, having been in that, on the streets of Goa with the cram down yet finishing the race has given me confidence to do a lot of other things outside the, the world of sports. So, yeah. yeah so that's... B- believe me, my, the, my first marathon, <laughs> and every marathon I was down with cramps. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> but yeah, but I improved. So, Chaitanya, I'm, like, power <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm coming. And, I, I, in <laughs> fact, I'm waiting for Nikhil to give me boxing lessons first. So I, I feel from badminton to boxing to triathlon is a better uh, choice to go after. <laughs> but yeah, no, but I, I will, I will, I'll surely come. So Chaitanya, my last Jump question. Jump in the deep water. Uh, yes, uh, uh, but that time I, I prefer my scuba gear. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, Chaitanya, uh, uh, my last question to you: What has been the toughest moment for you as an athlete and a coach? Toughest moment as an athlete, definitely. Uh, to deal with the whole uh, financial aspect of mm-hmm. uh, until the time I found a sponsor like this. Right. The struggle was real uh, because the dreams were big. I uh, wanted to win races and couldn't do it with uh, the best equipment, right? 
the best equipment was cost a cost a lot of money. Um, so right. cycle behind me costs about one lakh rupees. This this small uh, this one here about four mm-hmm. lakh rupees. To Merida, Merida, my sponsor, it was only possible. Otherwise, uh, I was you know I didn't I don't even have the money to buy that. Right? It's crazy. I mean, it's you can buy a car with that. So yeah, <laughs> um, exactly. So before yeah, so that was one of the biggest uh, uh, struggling points to find a good sponsor and. Uh, you know, then so that, winning the races. Right. Uh, then after that, as a as a coach, uh, I believe some of the most challenging parts are yet to come because I would like to see some of uh, my athletes go to the Olympics and go uh, go at the international level, uh, like mm. really big. So I bet there will be a lot of challenges coming. But till till date, uh, there were a couple of things that do come to my mind is when I had uh, a blind. Uh, triathlete finished uh, his, he became the first Indian to finish an Ironman. Wow. Um, so the point, the decision point whether to take this athlete or not was a like a kind of a tough uh, thing for me. I couldn't sleep for nights after making that decision because there was no there was no reference point for me. Uh, Correct. And, was, and assi- assistance is, is throughout, right? Is the, there's a, there's yeah, a yeah, yeah, throughout. throughout, throughout yeah. Yeah. So I had my own assistant co- trainer, uh, coach with him uh, as his uh, sighted pilot, mm-hmm. but but even before that, you know, seven eight months before the actual event itself, when I was when this, uh, you know, we started talking to Niket, who, be, who was the first Indian Ironman, uh, it was pretty scary. I was like, how is that possible? I mean, I find it so tough with my eyes, you know. Um, so that was that was a big challenge. Wow. Uh, wow. But then then we pulled through. So then. You know, big lesson learned. We can actually do anything, right? <laughs> if a, I, a I guy can it's... do it, so the, I so mean, I... imagine you know, we tried to do it the whole. I, you know, uh, tried to swim, bike, and run with our eyes closed. It didn't last five minutes. I can't even walk with my eyes closed. So, uh, Chaitanya, I think uh, one a quick thing, uh, being a sports uh, industry professional, one quick thing I just wanted to say that I think you need to. Uh, I'm sure you are doing it, or uh, doing, uh, or might be doing it already. You need to get these stories out for people to understand because I have I've seen the sports get uh, or anything that becomes uh, viral or people yeah. start following it. But the moment they see the stories, yeah, there are the 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 it it is not something that nobody had seen Milka Singh or nobody had heard of uh, 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 Mary Com. But what happened with uh, uh, Bhag Milka Bhag and Mary Com movie? I think that is where the story came out. Obviously, yes. Yes. So uh, I think this is what you have a phenomenal power to do it, and I'm sure you're doing it. And if you need any any yeah, kind of and, assistance and support, do let us know. Definitely. <laughs> and, That's uh, because, you're, you're also doing. I mean, whatever you will will do with this, you, you know, you will be helping the whole triathlon movement. Whatever you know, in our way, we will be taking it forward. Yeah, and uh, one last question for you again. Uh, I know I the earlier I said last question, uh, but I think you no made problem. me a little emotional with the whole the the story of a blind guy completing it. And I feel what am I doing sitting here, uh, honestly talking about uh, I can't swim in the open water. It I made us that. all feel like that. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I I you won't believe my last uh, when I said my 2:15 was uh, the best time I had. Uh, it was in Mumbai, and uh, that's when I saw uh, there is a there is a Sardarji who who has amputated legs. Yes, and yes. he 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 ran past me at at after after the flyover was done the the sea link was done near Warli he he uh, he overtook me and went ahead and I said what am I cribbing for <laughs> I think uh, that was that was yeah. my moment uh, and uh, I, that was my best rest to be very honest uh, Chaitanya uh, uh, so coming back to uh, the one one uh, question here. What are the uh, do you, what are the career options available for people who are aspirants to be part of this industry? As an athlete? No, not or, athlete. Uh, I'm talking okay. about the, say uh, the MBA students or the event students and all those things. What? Ah, okay, okay, really, okay, okay, okay. See, this is a very unorganized uh, industry at the moment. Yes. So that is basically it could either scare you away or a good student would rather see a lot of opportunities, right. like how how I did. There are a couple of other people who saw the opportunity and moved in. Because you know, small fish or you know, small lake or whatever, big big fish, right? So if if you are up for some challenges, definitely you know you will not have a lot of references. Ki, you know what did my senior people do? Did they do anything in this field? No. I already right. had a couple of interns from uh, MBA. Uh, uh, there was this uh, sports college from Bombay. Um, uh, 
Nikhil, you know that college, right? Where uh, uh, I, ISM. ISM. Okay. So I hired a guy from there, and um, I plan to hire at least one or two guys every every year, at least for one one whole, say either a, a semester unit or a one year, if they can do their internship here. So mm-hmm. then they can take it forward, and definitely, you know, there's so much thing that they can learn. Akash, my intern, he was actually handling whole events. Um, uh, he was uh, athlete coordinator. There was, you know. It, I don't think that the whole college would have taught him any of it, what he learned. Right, right. In fact, one of, just to, just to symbiosis, our... one of my students from Symbiosis, one of my students I think he trains with you, Parth. Oh, yeah. Parth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, he yeah. also interned with me, correct? So, I'm correct, currently correct. making him write a paper for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He told me. I, I'm, I'm his guide. So. Ah, okay. <laughs> Small world. Small world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah Nikhil, you're saying something. Sorry. No, no, I was just, I was just saying that uh, Sid and, and since I've been uh, as, as more on the faculty side of sports management, interacting with a lot of students and what I've seen as an athlete also, the from an event standpoint, the kind of planning that has to go in into triathlon, right? In terms of since there's a lot of let's say biking on the on, yeah. on the on the streets outside, the whole safety aspect is extremely critical. The the points to sort of make your nutrition and hydration everything available, right? From that to, I think, even uh, the whole uh, aspect of uh, the technology in sports, and that, that's something uh, yeah. that's pretty close to me. But and, and the kind of technology, advanced technology in, in triathlon that I see, right, from your cadence sensors to your power meters to your indoor cycling trainers, you, you name it, right? So yeah. as an industry, I, I, I see tremendous opportunity for students to, and this is the right time, as Chaitanya said, to, mm-hmm. to, to get involved, to really be in this whole movement, we're building something ground up in the country right. and, and help take there, it to the next level. There are a lot of uh, events that will come up. As I mm-hmm. said, in the next five years, we'll see a big, big, uh, it's a big thing. So people getting into events or, or even uh, management uh, students who want to go get into sales. Uh, I yeah. personally know a lot of uh, big companies, uh, brands like Garmin, Merida. They yeah. keep, you know, contacting me and asking if we want people for sales to help plan in right. their sales, regional sales. Uh, yeah. Big opportunities there, uh, but they'll have to, you know, work their way ground up. It's not like right. working in a proper corporate structure. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but yeah, I mean, if, if and again, I would request you directly is. If you have any kid who wants to work uh, with us, we are more than happy. Yeah, uh, send them over. We can talk to them. Yes, no problem, no problem. Hey, thank you guys. I think it was uh, interesting, uh, intriguing, and I probably I'm thinking of uh, joining Team Chai uh, to come and uh, train myself. Uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah. But, uh, but for that, Nikhil has to first train me for boxing for at least 15 days. Uh, <laughs> okay. But hey, so, guys, running. Running is with, a part with, of with social training. distancing. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Perfect. Uh, thank you, guys. Really appreciate your time. And I think it's a wonderful sport to be part of. Uh, and I think it's, there's a future to it for sure. Uh, because the participation and that creates uh, a lot of big movement in the in, in the human life. It becomes a lifestyle. And, though, and people have seen uh, the yeah. science has proved the, the the impact of the healthy lifestyle or the fit fit lifestyle for the longest of the time. I think uh, you you are doing a phenomenal job. And uh, Nikhil, thank you uh, for picking this code because of you I could uh, get in touch with Chaitanya, and uh, this could happen. So thank you for picking this code again, and uh, uh, thank you, Chaitanya. So. For... And, and what you said, what just just a quick point, said what you said, right? The lifestyle sport, triathlon being a lifestyle sport. I think that that's really critical, and that's yeah. something. Hope your listeners also take away. From this, that given the the degree of this whole chronic diseases, lifestyle diseases, this sport can be integrated into your life, and this really fits in well. Yes. Uh, where you you don't uh, let's say uh, have any excuse not to participate in any of the three things. Correct. So uh, again, thanks thanks for thanks for having me. And, yes. Thank uh, you guys. Yeah, happy to be. Really appreciate that. Thank you. Sir, Thank you. Take care. Fun. And yes. good luck. Yes, and uh, wish you all the best uh, and uh, all the best to you, all your teams and uh, more power to you uh, to having more and training more and more at Triathlist. Thank you. Thank you for liking and sharing a lot of the content that we've been sharing on Sports Sportsy. Let's talk sports. But for that, please subscribe on this channel now. Mm-hmm.